what could possibly lead us to want to totally change who we are based on hurt, past traumas, and the fact that we just don't like what we see in the mirror. I know that there are people that are being informed by the medical community and having them believe that there is something physically wrong with them, the term being born in the wrong body. And I could understand how appealing that is. There are voids to be filled and people are filling it with things that are really not quenching their thirst. I've been observing the transgender community and the individuals that identify as gay and lesbian for quite a while now. I lived in the community for a very long time, 38 years to be exact. And I'm a very analytical person. It's what I do. I analyze, I study, I research. I put puzzle pieces together. What is the difference between a person that identifies as a member of the LGBT versus those individuals that are now identifying as ex-gays and ex-trans. The difference is that those that identify as ex-trans and ex-gays, you can literally see the joy in their eyes, in their face. They light up when they talk about Jesus. They have a purpose that it's outside of themselves which gives them happiness because there's so much more joy in giving than there is in receiving. Many in the LGBT community are very self-consumed. And I'm not meaning that in any derogatory fashion whatsoever. It is what it is. They're trying to alter their being in the quest of trying to find happiness. But what I've seen and I've observed that once that individual goes from point A to point B, they're now in point B and they're still not happy. Because they think that by altering a body part, that that's going to bring them joy. Many find out that that's not the case. On the contrary. I've seen more people's dysphoria get worse after they've undergone surgery and have been on hormones and they've transitioned. What I have seen in individuals that no longer identify or are part of the LGBT that have found the best source to fill their void, and that source would be God. I find that these individuals have a total different demeanor about them. So you look at individuals that are transitioning versus the individuals that are detransitioning, and you're gonna see a massive difference because we are filling the void with something that really matters. It's, it's something that's not self-consumption, but on the contrary, we have given our way, our worries to something higher. We sleep easier at night. We don't worry about the trivial things that we worried about before. It's such a tremendous difference. I've been talking to a lot of ex-gays and ex-trans and it's just, it's amazing the joy that I see, how they just love to share their testimony. They want to glorify Father versus the LGBT group. It's all about glorifying themselves. And after a while, that kind of loses its flavor. I find that as we age, those that are in the LGBTQ community kind of 
fizzle out. They don't have any joy. The joy that they started off with lasted very, it was very short lived. Yet I've seen people from the ex trans or ex gays that have been ex trans and ex gays for 20 odd years and they still have that same joy they had from day one that they gave their life to Jesus. I mean, I know yesterday when I got baptized, the joy that I felt, I was crying, but there was tears of joy. Because I felt like, wow, I'm finally coming home. You know, dad has finally got me. The sense of relief, the sense of joy. I've never felt before. On the contrary, when I lived in the LGBT community, there was always anxiety, angst. Just, it, it never felt peaceful. And I look at those individuals that are in that community, they never seem to really be at peace. They have a moment of joy when they've gotten something, but then it fizzles out and they're back to being depressed, anxious. It's, it's just a very, what's the word I'm looking for? It's so apparent, you know, it's so very apparent person in the LGBT is always wanting something, always, you know, searching for something, grasping for something. I'm going to get this done and that done. And next gay or next trans is surrender. This is God's will. I don't have to worry about anything anymore. Doors start to open. Things just become so apparently peaceful and beautiful. It's not about the material realm. It's about the spiritual. It's about letting God take the wheel. And I know it's, it's difficult for those that are not believers to understand exactly what I'm trying to say here. And let me tell you, I was not a believer before. You know, I had a hard time with the Bible and a hard time with the whole concept of Christ dying on the cross for us. But I was fighting it because that was part of my LGBTQ programming, fighting it and fighting things. But when you surrender and you get a new heart and a new mind and the peace that comes over you, it's amazing. I created a new acronym instead of LGBTQ representing lesbian, gays, bisexual, trans and queer, let God bring truth quickly. Let God bring truth quickly. That has such a beautiful ring to it. We all like truth. We all search for truth. We all want love. But unfortunately, many look for love in the wrong places. Many try to find their joy in something that's not lasting and that's trivial. Because when you look at the bigger picture and knowing that we are to live eternally, our spirits are eternal, our bodies are not. Does it make sense to strive for the eternal spirit versus these material bodies that we pretty much rent for a very short amount of time. I wish I could find the proper words to help you understand that the void that you are filling inside is being filled with something that's not everlasting, something that can never really fill you up. It's like when you're eating and you're eating junk food, your body knows that you're not putting the proper nutrition. So you keep eating and eating because you're really not feeling full because you're not providing your body with the vitamins and minerals that it needs. So you eat and eat and you're eating empty calories. That's pretty much what you're doing by trying to fill the void with external things, with sex, with drugs, with altering your body to fit what you believe you should be like. But when you 
drink of the eternal water, when you allow the Holy Spirit to fill that void, you no longer need anything. You've got everything you need within you. Father makes sure of that. So now you're eating all the good foods, the foods that you don't need to fill yourself up on because they are full of nutrients. Father's love, Father's words, his living word will fill you and you will feel the everlasting peace, everlasting love. You will need nothing but him. Many people don't know his love. They push it away. But when you open up your heart to Father and ask him to help you, ask him to take that pain away, ask him to give you a new heart and a new mind, I promise you, life will be very different. You've got to believe You've got to be willing and you got to let him take control. Once you do that, your life will never be the same. I know my life hasn't. Thank you guys for listening. Give father a chance. Let God bring truth quickly.